Congratulations, you just found the perfect property for you and your investment goals. And whether it's house hacking or investing or you're just planning on moving into the property, you got to make sure that it's ship shape. And simply walking the property is not going to cut it. You got to make sure the electrical is good, the roof is, you know, of decent age. You got to make sure the gas all works and everything in between. And just touring the property is not going to cut it. You got to make sure that the gas works, the appliances work, everything looks decent. And so that is where a home inspection comes in. So I'm going to be detailing what goes into a home inspection, what is a high risk situation for that home, and anything in between and how to navigate an inspection report. Cue the intro. So first of all, why do we need a home inspection? Well, we just don't know what's going on behind the walls, whether it's electrical, the plumbing, anything like that. And you gotta make sure that everything's okay before you move in and before you buy the property. And one of the best parts about these home inspections is that you can use this as leverage for negotiation with the seller. And although home inspections are pretty comprehensive, it's not completely comprehensive. For example, it's not going to check on the chimneys. It's not going to check on any mold behind the walls or anything like that. There's still a lot of unknowns that it's just not completely comprehensive. So I want to make sure you know that. And the things like mold or chimney inspection or foundation, they can give their opinion. But my advice and probably their advice too is to hire a professional and make sure they know what they're looking at. So what does a home inspection look like? A home inspection is going to have a whole bunch of categories, whether it's satisfactory, fair, poor, or needs replacement and things like that. And because there are so many items and nothing will say, yes, it's great or good. The most that it can give as far as the rating goes is probably satisfactory. So there's a lot of red flags that happens on these inspection reports because these inspectors want to cover their butt by the time something happens or if something happens by the time closing happens. I like to tell my clients that there are going to be some scary things on the report itself, like a lot of red flags and things like that. But my first tip I have for you is just don't panic. Everything is fixable. And if anything, this is a great negotiation tactic to bring it up to the seller to see if they want to fix it. There are a lot of things on there that are going to be scary and some things might even be brought up that just weren't discussed by the time the inspection happened when you were there. I usually get a Zoom call going with my clients about 24 hours after we get the inspection report so that we've had a chance to look at it and we just want to look at it on our own before we fully discuss it like with a conversation between us two. And like I said earlier, everything is negotiable. So if the roof is 15 years old, let's put that into the negotiation with the seller. Or if let's say something small like the gas pilot light is not working on the stove, then let's put that into the negotiation. And if there's anything I've learned from being a real estate agent is that everything in real estate is negotiable. And speaking of negotiations, this is another really good tip for you. And the second tip I have is get a sewer scope and a radon test done for your Denver home. If you have a basement and you're anywhere else in the country, yeah, you should definitely get a radon test or even get a sewer scope. I guess this applies to every home out there. Just get a radon test if you have a basement sewer scope and just the regular home inspection as well knowing the status of your sewer is clutch i can't tell you how many times my buyer was ecstatic that something was wrong with it because they would not want to handle all of these problems if they were to go through with the transaction and that's just the sewer the radon situation is not that big of a problem i mean sure radon is a carcinogenic don't get me wrong but it's an easy fix as far as opening up the windows and mitigating it that way, but you can also install a radon mitigation system, which only costs about $1,200 one time fee and it automatically does it on its own. And yes, there are some additional fees with the sewer scope and the radon test. So grand total with the sewer scope, the radon test and the home inspection, you're looking at about 800, maybe $850 depending on who you ask. So let's get into the inspection itself. And not all red flags are created equal. We wanna make sure that we handle the big ticket items and negotiate for them or work with them first before we get into the small things. So what are some of these bigger ticket items? Some of these bigger ticket items are like HVAC, roof, water heater. I guess that's sort of big. 
but maybe looking at structural foundation issues, maybe even roof situation. I think I said roof already. So things like that, those are bigger ticket items. The smaller ticket items would be like, let's say garbage disposal in the sink, the leaves in the gutter, or replacing the outlets in the bathrooms for GFCI outlets, things like that. And there is some flexibility with negotiation here. And a lot of that flexibility would depend on what the market is like for the seller, the buyer, or whatever it might be. If it's a seller's market, I think you might have to forego a lot of the smaller things and maybe just focus on a couple of big things. Of course, we could just try to push the envelope, but the seller can decide like, hey, I don't want to cover any of these things. I feel like I could find another buyer who might be able to take on these things without having to you know, worry about all the small things, right? But if it's more of a buyer's market, the seller wants to keep the buyer in the transaction all the way to the closing time. So the buyer might be able to ask for a lot more during the inspection processes or the negotiation process. And so the third tip I have for you is to be there for the whole inspection. It's pretty important to even just understanding what it's like to you know, be there for an inspection and understand what they're actually looking for and what they have found, especially if it's your first property. And these home inspections might be around two-ish, maybe three hours. So if you can't make it to that, I would say just be there for the last 30 minutes so that they can go over the summary of what they think or what they have found during the whole inspection. And yes, the inspection part might be kind of scary, especially with them digging through all of these things and you found your perfect property, you're like, I hope nothing bad is coming up. I completely understand. But the thing is, is that you gotta have your emotions out of the transaction. You gotta treat it almost like a business, especially if you're house hacking or if you're just doing the investment property. It's, you know, having the emotions involved means that you would, you would be more willing to push that threshold of what you would take on a little bit further than what makes sense monetarily, if that makes sense. And there are numbers to everything, right? Everything is negotiable, everything is fixable, whether it's through labor or through money. And remember, everything is negotiable and everything is fixable. Of course, they can decide not to go through and help you out with those bigger credits or the roof or something like that. And by that time, if the money just doesn't make sense to you or if it costs too much money, then you could just back out of the deal. Of course, ask a real estate agent first because there are some deadlines that are put into the contract and if you back out after that date, then you might not get your earnest money deposit back and that's usually $5,000 or $10,000 depending on the transaction itself. So if I could give you a little bit of insight on like what these bigger ticket items cost, let's say like a roof, the full replacement would be $15,000. And if the seller's not willing to negotiate with you on that or lower the purchase price or give you some sort of seller credit on it, then you could just walk away. I mean, if it, if it doesn't make financial sense for you, then you don't have to take it. And I wanna make sure that your quality of life is good to go, especially for properties like these when the inspection just has a whole bunch of red flags to it, right? There are so many things to the inspection process and it's really tough to get around it, right? So that's why you don't need to. You have professionals like myself and my team to help you out through the whole process. So if you're interested in that, if you wanna go through finding your house hack, finding a new place to live or an investment property, hit me up. All my contact information is down below. I will make sure that you find the property of your dreams and it makes monetary sense along the way. Also, if you have any questions with the inspection itself, like please let me know, even if I'm not your real estate agent. I wanna make sure that you're just confident going in and maybe if there's some extra insight that you want, let me know. Like I, I do this all the time and I wanna make sure you're good to go. So that's about it for the inspection process. I mean, there's still a lot more about it and there's a lot more nuances per transaction, per house and all that good stuff but maybe that's a video for a different time and I might be able to go through a whole inspection report sometime in the future if this is something you guys wanna see. But let me know in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to helping you guys out. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys next week.